This episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual who's coming off of a strong victory at Ryzen 37, which transpired on July the 31st. Marcos Yoshio de Souza falling in the second round to Daichi Abe, and very happy to be talking to that individual today. How's your day going so far there, man? So yeah, I feel great. Um, I just finished morning practice, and uh, I'm prepared uh, to be able to take any offer that comes anytime. Yeah, so, I mean, I would think that based on that kind of verbiage there, maybe a quick turnaround would be desired is there any kind of like card or particular month that might be getting looked at for the next contest ideally um, I just want to fight as soon as possible. I can jump on that September card if you know if, there, if there's a spot. Um, I can fight in October. I just want to fight as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, I would think there's a lot of momentum underneath right now, just with back-to-back victories under the Ryzen banner there after the debut didn't necessarily pan out. So it seems like there's that level of momentum from the back-to-back wins as Daichi feeling that as well, like maybe more comfortable under the Ryzen rule set and in the promotion and all? あの、安倍選手は大、えっと、ライジンの、え、ビュー戦こそちょっと、えっと、落としてしまったものの、その後順調に、えっと、勝ち星を重ねて、今、え、ライジンで連勝中です。えっと、ま、ライジンの雰
is that an opponent that interests you? It would seemingly be someone you'd want to have test skills with based on how you're kind of talking about it, though. Do you see that as maybe the next one if you had it your way fighting Damian Brown? Yeah, I think a legit. I think he's a legitimate and tough fighter. But uh, for me, I don't. I don't choose opponents. If it's if, if it's put in front of me, I'll take the fight. And I would think, because you talk about wanting the division to be built around you, ideally, and bring more shine to the welterweight division. I mean, there's obviously at this point not a formally established title holder in the welterweight division is that something that's like a mapped out goal for you becoming the welterweight champion in rise and like establishing yourself in that presently open spot え、ウェルタ級をもう少しコストアップしていくっていう過成化させていくっていう中で自分がその日本人選手としてそのライジンのウェルタ級の中心人物になっていくっていうえ、ビジョンみたいなものを安倍選手持っていますか最終的にはライ
that's fair in terms of like the specific gym you were training at though like where were you getting in work with like what's the regular space you hone your skills thereえっと、僕は今フリー、僕はフリーなんで、ま、結構いろんなとこに、え、こう行ってるんですよ。ボクシングはボクシングジム行ったり。で、あとゴミさんのジムにも行ったり。で、あとなんかスパーリングだとなん
、で、で、僕もそのやんちゃ坊主だったんで、そのタイミングでなんか親父にちょっと勧められて行くようになりました。うん。So, uh, the, the Wikipedia is actually incorrect.、Um, I started Jew at six from first grade. So, yeah, I started Jew at six. And the reason is because my dad was, has been a judo practitioner for a long time. And、um, I myself was a mischievous little, little boy, little brat. So,、um, you know, it, it, helped me,、uh, it helped me get things straightened out. Yeah, that's cool that it's part of the family lineage there and everything like that. And hopefully, get a little footnote on Wikipedia there to kind of correct that a little bit, change it from eight to six there. But something else I was seeing was that, like, later on, the training kind of segued into like, more boxing. And kickboxing. So, I guess the question is like, was there always that desire to want to bring your skill set to like an MMA kind of context? Like, was mixed martial arts competition always a goal for you from that early point? そうですね。まあ、あの、そのプロフィールを読んでいくと、まあ、その柔道から次第にボクシングだったり、キックボクシングだったり、打撃の方に、えー、練習をしていくっていうふうに書いてあるんですが、もうこの時点で安倍選手は将来的には MMA 選手になりたいっていうゴールはあったんですかでゴール設定は正直決まってなかったんですよ。なんか僕らがやっぱり、えー、高校の時って、えー、っと、K1、とか結構みんなで見る場面が多くて、で、その中で、最初、まあ、自分、打撃が好きだったから、ちょっと立ち技でトップ目指そうと思ってたんです。その中で、なんかその、一応、J ネットワークっていう団体でチャンピオンになってから、で海外目指そうと思っても、なんか、どこが世界一の団体なのかっていうのが分からず、そうした中で、なんか格闘技のなんか雑誌読んでると、一番のトップページがやっぱ UFC だったんですよね。じゃあ俺も柔道もやってて、やっぱ打撃もできるようになってきたから、総合に転向してみようっていうチャレンジから、えー、最初は MMA のきっかけとして、その僕、ハワイにちょっと、なんだろう、合宿に行ってみて、あ、MMA 楽しいと思って、総合本格的にやり始めました。So I didn't really have a clear goal when I started striking, because back in high school, Um, you know, we would gather together with Buddy and we'd watch K1. That was, that was the main thing going on on, on our end. It was K, K1. And I've always been interested in striking, so I started to try it out. And,、um, you know, as I was getting into the striking portion, I became the champion of、uh, J Nep. And,、um, you know, once you get there, I looked around internationally and there wasn't re- a, a, a real. Big promotion to go to overseas and, and, and striking and kickboxing. And、um, there wasn't a real clear number one in the world. So, you know, and, and at the same time, when you look at like fight magazines, everything, everybody's talking about the UFC, you know,、uh, the front page is all UFC. So I started to think that, well, I have a judo background and, you know, I'm, 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 become, I, I'm becoming a legitimate striker. So why not?、Uh, Challenge myself into the sport of MMA. And、uh, after that, I thought about <clears throat> becoming, becoming an MMA fighter. I flew to Hawaii and、uh, I, I joined an MMA gym, and it was so fun. And、uh, I felt that it, it clicked. I felt that this was for me, and I've been in MMA since. Yeah, a great journey. Must be cool to have been reading those magazines, like talking about UFC in a certain way, and then to garner a victory. In the octagon, a cool chapter and a great story that's taking place under the Ryzen banner now. A lot of great chapters ahead. But one thing I was kind of curious to ask about, just because you have a past competitive history with Li Jing Liang, and just with the timing of this interview taking place, like he's leading into his fight with Tony Ferguson over the weekend. I was just curious if you might have any particular thoughts on that bout and how you think it might play out. I know, Abe Senshu, it's a very good thing. えー、いろいろとお話が、えー、すごく、えー、嬉しい、嬉しいんですけれども、ちょっと今、ちょうどタイミング的にも、えっ、ー、と、まあ、週末、トーニックパパさんとリー・ジャンニンが、えー、試合するんですけれども、うん、えー、まあ、リー選手と対戦したことのある安倍選手から見て、この試合、どういうふうに見てますかうん、そうですね。まあ、リー選手は、やっぱり、えー、強かった印象があるし、
、なんだろう、やっぱ打たれても打たれても前に来るような、まあ、ゾンビ的な感じがするので、勝つんじゃないかなとは思ってます。So, from my experience, you know, fighting Lee, he, he was just a tough guy. He was super strong, super tough. And my biggest impression is that you can hit him and hit him and hit him, and he'll still press forward like a zombie. So, I think, you know, Lee has that mentality, he has that endurance, and、uh, he's got that durability.、Uh, he has enough to, to get the win over Tony Ferguson. Yeah, it's an interesting fight there, but a lot of interesting fights that you've been a part of and will be a part of going forward. And I do appreciate you making some time to come on the show and give your insights, Daichi. But I also want to be mindful of your time and schedule and everything, too. So, to that point, is there anything maybe you want to add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up here? Yeah, well, definitely on track to be doing that. I love the discussion about wanting to fight international opponents, like eyeballing a potential you know, championship belt in the future. And yeah, a strong year so far with the back to back victories in 2022. So, like I said, well positioned in that regard. But really appreciate both of you taking the time to help facilitate doing this interview and everything. And just, yeah, thanks so much for the time, Daichi. And yeah, appreciate you coming on after such a great win at Ryzen 37. まあ、別に本当に今年は、えっ、ー、と、素晴らしいスタートで今2連勝で、2連勝中で、えー、まさに本当に外国人選手とやるにふさわしい、えー、年になっていると思いますので、えっ、ー、と、これからも頑張って、えー、トレーニングをして、えー、試合楽しみにしますので、えー、頑張ってください。本日はお時間いただいて本当にありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。お疲れ様です。ありがとうございました。あ,ありがとうございました。はいはい、すいません。大丈夫です。Okay, Dylan, thank you.、Uh, thank you, guys. はい、失礼します。はい、失礼します。